Hello and welcome to another edition of Out of the Blue. I'm Mike Browning. The long anticipated opening of MTSU's new student union, where we are today, arrived in late August. Needless to say, the opening came with much excitement. Prior to the August 25th opening, we were given a tour of the student union by Vice President of Student Affairs, Sarah Sudak. The MTSU Student Union is the family room of the university, so it's a place for faculty, staff, and students to come and hang out and socialize and have a place that they can truly call their own home. So we've designed it so that it can be a place where students can find a quiet nook to study, find a place to grab something to eat, go to a movie, um, have a classroom uh, meeting uh, using one of the conference rooms to have further their academic pursuits. Just a unique opportunity for them to experience MTSU in a different light. The three-story, 211,000 square feet gathering place benefits students, faculty, and staff, as well as the greater community in many ways and is another campus addition to be mighty proud of. To our knowledge in the state of Tennessee, it's one of the biggest that we have. Um, we know that there are others that are in the process of building um, new facilities, but we believe ours is the showcase um, and doesn't really have any point of comparison within the state or within the surrounding community. We have three seminar rooms up here. The windows you're seeing over the atrium space are the student organization office. It's truly a student union, which they haven't had before. Um, the other, the Keithley University Center has been considered the student union primarily because there's a food court in there, but it's really an administrative space with lots of staff offices and the post office and the bookstore. But now the bookstore is moving over here to the student union, receiving a lot more space to be able to personalize things for students in addition to books that they can purchase for class. It will also be more like a traditional bookstore that has paperbacks that they can come in and lounge space where they can go into the bookstore and sit and read at their leisure. It's um, situated against the roundabout on the north side of campus, so it has a great view of that part of campus, has a lot of nice space for them to congregate and hang out and socialize. The third floor features offices for the Center for Student Involvement and Leadership, student organizations, student government, and student unions and programming. A number of television lounges offer students inviting sanctuaries for comfort and wide window views of the Honors Building to the south and the year-old College of Education Building to the west. We can have outdoor events out here, similar to how we use the KUC Courtyard. We wanted to take advantage of the surroundings, so we wanted to showcase the natural light and the outdoor quad area and the public spaces and make it feel like we were bringing the outside in. With all the natural daylighting, it also will help us save on our energy costs. More than architecturally pleasing, the new student union is designed for practical use. This is the ballroom. It can seat 850 people for a seated meal or 1,500 people in theater style seats. It will divide down into five sections. You're standing in one, two, the middle is three, and then two in the corner. The ballroom is a big amenity that no one really has seen on this campus. We've never had a space where we can have 850 people seated for dinner, or we can have up to 1,500 people seated in theater-style seats for an event. I think it will become a multi-purpose event where we'll have our own programs and concerts and activities in there. In addition to a handsome executive conference room, the union features an 84-seat parliamentary room designed to enhance student government deliberations and decision-making. The parliamentary room is designed primarily for student, the Student Government Association to hold their meetings, so it will accommodate all of the students participating in SGA, and then it has an electronic voting system so that they'll be able to cast their votes on resolutions uh, through SGA, and it'll automatically, th com through a computer, tally their outcomes. Obviously, the video theater. A 95-seat video theater on the second floor will eventually have close proximity to a future parking garage under construction near the rec center slated for spring 2014. This is the vestibule where the bridge from the student services building will connect to the student union. Perhaps the most exciting amenity for students and faculty, a 640-seat food court and a 102-seat casual dining restaurant. Then the food court and the casual dining restaurant on the first floor offered a multitude of food options for students, whether they need something quickly to grab and go, or they want to sit and have a leisurely meal in the restaurant, or spend uh, less, less time in the food court. 
We'll have a Panda Express in the venue. We'll have a hot dog concept called the Dog House. We'll have a Mexican concept called Tortilla Fresca. We'll offer a soup and salad and potato bar um, option, the Happy Tomato and Totally Baked Potato Bar. And we will also offer Popeye's fried chicken in that venue. And then we'll have the casual dining restaurant, uh, the Blue Raider Grill. Designed by Street Dixon Rick Architecture and Thomas Miller and Partners, MTSU's new student union is just the latest addition to the growing east side of campus and true blue pride. You can view a slideshow of more photos of the new student union at mtsunews.com slash new student union. MTSU has entered into an historic partnership with the U.S. Army and Marine Corps. Aerospace, computer science, engineering technology, and other programs will study how land-based robots can be used in concert with unmanned aircraft. The agreement with the U.S. military, the second in a year, was officially signed in mid-August. We believe that this agreement is yet another in a series of bold and innovative steps forward that we have taken to provide the very best in facilities, training, and service in this very important area. With the signing of a second agreement with the U.S. military, MTSU is once again demonstrating its ongoing commitment to make private and public sector partnerships a top priority. The latest partnership with the Army and Marine Corps Joint Robotic System will help the U.S. military find ways to get unmanned systems, aerial and robotic, to work together. It comes one year after MTSU and the Army entered a similar unique partnership, announced in Washington, D.C. last August, to study remote-controlled Raven aircraft system. So that is why Middle Tennessee State University was a perfect choice to bring this robotics uh, program to because of their existing agreement with UAS and also the, co the location near, uh, near us down at, uh, down at Redstone. MTSU students like Steve Lawn, who started flying radio-controlled aircraft and working as a remote test pilot for a company before entering MTSU, is looking forward to the new research. Well, the end goal for interoperability is basically to take all unmanned vehicles, air, ground, and water, and have a common interface, a common language, so that if a uh, soldier, for instance, gets trained on the system, they don't have to go to a different training for every single system. As threats increase and budgets decrease, MTSU remains on the cutting edge of helping develop unmanned technology. MTSU is among an elite list of universities with multiple students receiving Fulbright grants to promote understanding abroad. Adam Emerson, double major in psychology and international relations, will teach English in Russia. The Liberty, Tennessee native has already studied in Moscow and Prague. Anna Yokovone, a postgraduate advisor in the Office of Education Abroad, will teach English in Laos. The Sevierville native studied previously in Thailand and Italy. Daniel Goger will conduct scientific exploration in molecular dynamics and modeling at Barcelona, Spain. MTSU history professor Dr. Sean Foley returns to campus this fall after a 15-month Fulbright-sponsored research trip to Malaysia and Southeast Asia. Foley studied at International Islamic University in Kuala Lumpur under a grant from the U.S. State Department's Fulbright program. In addition to research, Foley made trips to India, Thailand, Singapore, Indonesia, China, and New Zealand to deliver presentations. Foley discussed his research during a recent interview on MTSU's On the Record. One of the things I didn't expect was that Facebook is extremely popular in Malaysia um, and in fact is one of the highest penetrations. Something like 40 percent of the population is on Facebook. Foley teaches courses in Middle Eastern and world history. An MTSU journalism professor has been named the recipient of a National Media Research Award. Dr. Catherine A. Foss won the 2012 James W. Carey Media Research Award competition, sponsored by the Carl Couch Center for Social and Internet Research. Foss shared her award with a South Carolina University co-author of an article in the 2012 edition of Book History, distributed by Johns Hopkins University Press. Well, MTSU continues to expand its curriculum off campus. University administrators, educators, and head coach Rick Insel gathered for an open house of the expanded Middle Tennessee Education Center in Shelbyville. This facility is wonderful. I want to thank all of you for 
for having this facility. It has great expansion potential. It's a beautiful facility. We're about giving the finest education possible to Middle Tennessee. I think you all know that. And with our partner in Motlow State, we have developed this amazing MTech. You know, when you t start talking about our ag department, our business department, education, our aerospace, our concrete management, you know, when you, you start sitting down in front of these parents and you t start telling them about Middle Tennessee State University, and then they go check us out and they find out, hey, they're not just blowing smoke. We, we appreciate what, what you're doing and, and uh, we're glad to be partners with you. MTech is offering 21 new courses this fall. It's a partnership among MTSU, Motlow State Community College, and Bedford County government. Well, 981 more students now have a diploma from Middle Tennessee State University following the summer commencement ceremony. This indeed is a day of celebration for all of us. For on this day, we reflect upon your tremendous accomplishment. To those of you who are graduating, I encourage you to enjoy this time of excitement and to bask in the glory that comes with this day. So as you embark to you, on your post-graduation journey, be adventurous. Go into uncharted territories. Have a strong moral compass that recalibrates. I encourage you to remain involved with MTSU. Remain proud of your alma mater. Please move your tassel from the right to the left side of your caps. Congratulations. Congratulations. You know, to capture an entire town, an entire garrison, basically right underneath the enemy's nose is a you know, coup in and of itself, tactically. I am True Blue. As a member of this diverse community, I am a valuable contributor to its progress and success. I am engaged in the life of this community. I am a recipient and a giver. I am a listener and a speaker. I am honest in word and deed. I am committed to reason, not violence. I am a learner now and forever. I am a Blue Raider. I am a Blue Raider. I'm a Blue Raider. True Blue. This is not just a recording studio. This is not just a flight school. This is not just a university. This is MTSU, home of Tennessee's best.
Tennessee is rich in Civil War history. The Volunteer State has been commemorating the sesquicentennial of the Civil War with, among other things, living history events. MTSU history professor Dr. Carol Van West is the co-chair of the Tennessee Civil War Sesquicentennial Commission. Now, recently, Oakland's historic House Museum and Stones River National Battlefield commemorated the Murfreesboro Raid of Nathan Bedford Forrest, also known as the Battle of Murfreesboro. Well, if you know your history, you know that Forrest is a controversial figure known for war crimes and the KKK, which he started, but from which he disassociated in 1869. He is also regarded as the Wizard of the Saddle. Born in Chapel Hill, Tennessee on July 13, 1821, Nathan Bedford Forrest rose to become a Lieutenant General in the Confederate Army during the Civil War and is most remembered for his innovative strategy and tactics. In fact, most people would consider him the, the, you know, the greatest cavalry general that uh, our nation has ever produced. Forrest acquired great wealth as a planter and slave trader. In fact, he was one of the richest men of the South. But his biggest commodity that he traded in was, in fact, people. He was a slave uh, trader. Um, some folks hold that against him, although there were a lot of slave traders back then. But... In July 1861, he enlisted with the Tennessee Mounted Rifles as a private. Seeing how badly equipped the Confederates were, Forrest offered to buy horses and equipment with his own money for a regiment of Tennessee volunteers. He actually joined as a private uh, in the infantry regiment first, but then decided he didn't like that, so he decided to recruit and equip basically his own cavalry regiment. Even before the raid at Murfreesboro, Forrest had distinguished himself at Fort Donelson and Shiloh. And for him, I think a lot of it is that, you know, he was not saddled with, pardon the pun, um, West Point training. But this whole concept of the deep in-country raid, the behind-the-lines thing, that's kind of not something that was really taught at West Point. And so you had to kind of figure it out from scratch. And so in a lot of ways, I think that helped him because he didn't have to unlearn anything. He just had to figure out what worked. Union Colonel William Duffield arrived in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, commanding the 9th Michigan. The following day, the Union garrison was attacked and defeated by Forrest in the First Battle of Murfreesboro. Colonel Duffield was wounded and captured during the attack. An effective disruptor of the Union Army, Forrest had been ordered to launch the Confederate cavalry raid into Middle Tennessee using Texas and Georgia Rangers. I mean, like the, the, the raid here in Murfreesboro, I mean, what Forrest sees is if he takes his cavalry from Chattanooga, gets behind the enemy and smashes one of their most important supply depots, keeping the army going on to Chattanooga, then, you know, you can really put a dent with just a small group of men on horseback. You can, as it turns out, literally change the ebb and flow of warfare in this theater. On the morning of July 13, 1862, Colonel Duffield and the 9th Michigan Infantry were camped at Oaklands when Colonel Forrest charged into Murfreesboro and overpowered the Federals camped there. On that, that day was a good day for Forrest and a bad day for, for being in blue. Uh, Forrest came into town. Uh, he had gotten some information how the two Union regiments that made up the bulk of the garrison here, the 9th Michigan and the 3rd Minnesota, were encamped pretty much out of supporting distance of one another, and so made his plan to come in with a lightning strike, uh, which he did. He grappled with the 9th Michigan here at, the, at Oakland. By the end of the day, Colonel Forrest accepted the Union surrender inside Oakland's mansion. Uh, would subdue the, the garrison in the courthouse, then deal with or at least, you know, isolate the 3rd Minnesota, and then bit by bit using the mobility of his cavalry and a fair bit of bluff, even to make a headache of a poker player, uh, force each unit separately to surrender and essentially bag the entire garrison. It's a huge victory for the Confederates. I mean, you know, to capture an entire town and an entire garrison basically right underneath the enemy's nose is, you know, a coup in and of itself tactically. But then again, what it does is it really impacts um, the war effort on the Union side and really brings to a grinding halt the seemingly inexorable advance to Chattanooga. By all accounts, Forrest was an imposing figure. At 6'2 and over 200 pounds, he was physically intimidating. But Forrest doesn't stay long to savor victory at Murfreesboro. 
Remember, you've got your main army that is grinding through Middle Tennessee and Northern Alabama, so they're not on their own. You have a major garrison in Nashville and have had since the fall of Fort Donaldson. So, in fact, that's why Forrest leaves. He doesn't even stay here the whole day. He'll leave because he knows the response coming from Nashville or other places will be large and too large for him to handle. Forrest Cavalry Corps wasn't only about speed and firepower. His men were skilled swordsmen. From McMinnville, Forrest strikes the railroad again. He went uh, and, and struck the railroad again between Nashville and Murfreesboro. He also hit Lebanon, Tennessee. And then he would peel back towards Chattanooga for a while. Then, in the winter of 1862, Forrest goes on a deep raid on Grant's Army of Tennessee attacking their supply line in West Tennessee in concert with Earl Van Dorn, who would attack Holly Springs, Mississippi. The two of them together would essentially do the same thing. They would arrest the Army of the Tennessee almost in its tracks as they basically gutted their interior lines. Two years later, Forrest would be accused of war crimes at the Battle of Fort Pillow for allowing forces under his command to massacre hundreds of black Union Army and white Southern Unionists. There are quite a few primary accounts, even coming from Confederate sources, that you know, do tell us that, in fact, some were actually shot after surrendering. Many aren't aware that Forrest was at one time MTSU's mascot. The mascot was later changed to a hound dog named Old Blue in the 1970s. MTSU's current mascot, of course, is a winged horse named Lightning, adopted in 1998. Commemorating the 150th anniversary of the Civil War will continue throughout the fall and into 2013 with symposiums and other living history programs. One notable event will be the 150th anniversary of the Battle of Stones River in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, December 26th through January 2nd. For more information, visit the National Park Service website at www.nps.gov STRI. If I was an 18-year-old football player and got to walk through here to see where all my fans would be watching me from, this would be a pretty good selling point. We started in 1911 with a clear mission to train Tennessee's best teachers. For the last 100 years, Middle Tennessee State University has carried out that mission and so much more. Nationally recognized as an affordable, quality university, the number one choice of undergraduates in Tennessee. As we celebrate our centennial, we look with pride at the past. We look forward to the future. Check out why we're Tennessee's best. This is not just a recording studio. This is not just a flight school. This is not just a university. This is MTSU, home of Tennessee's best.
MTSU hosted a grand opening and ribbon cutting ceremony for the new Jeff Hendricks Stadium Club at Floyd Stadium. Members of the Hendricks family were on hand to honor the man for whom the club is named, Jeff Hendricks. This is it right here. If I had to pick one project, this would be it. And I'm not going to speak for the coaching staff, but I would imagine if I was an 18 year old football player and got to walk through here to see where all my fans would be watching me from, this would be a pretty good selling point. Um, you know, I, I know that Dad would be proud of what all of you have accomplished. And you know, though he's not here today, in spirit, he'll be here sitting in the middle of all the action every day forward. But uh, you know, thank you very much for choosing this project to honor our father. Um, you know, he was a great fan, and he'll always be here. The late Hendricks was a devoted Blue Raider supporter whose $1 million estate gift in December 2011 was the largest unrestricted donation in MTSU athletics history. MTSU has a new baseball coach. Jim McGuire has been promoted from associate coach to head coach after serving 20 years alongside former head coach Steve Peterson. What will be your stamp on this program? Well, I think it'll be, you know, keeping the core values of the program the same, but you know, expand the recruiting a little bit more, try to do a few different things there, try to be a little bit more aggressive from that end of it. Um, but I think, you know, trying to just continue the tradition, but then try to try to break through. And break through to me means, you know, get to that regional, try to get through the regional, you know, then get to that super regional and see what happens and try to make that run to Omaha. And, and, and that's my goal is to be the first coach, you know, in the history of this program to get there. McGuire replaces Steve Peterson, who retired after 25 seasons at the helm. Well, finally, on this edition of Out of the Blue, she was known as the Queen of Rockabilly, who toured with Elvis Presley. Wanda Jackson, seen here in the heart of her rock and roll years, performed on the MTSU campus for the 10th anniversary of the Southern Girls Rock and Roll Camp. Please welcome the Queen of Rock, Wanda Jackson. This fall, Jackson releases a new album titled Unfinished Business. This was the 10th year MTSU has hosted the Southern Girls Rock and Roll Camp, sponsored by Youth Empowerment Through the Arts and Humanities. For more information on MTSU News, be sure to go to mtsunews.com. That's it for this edition of Out of the Blue. Until next time, stay true blue.